Good evening, all you fantastic viewers out there, and welcome to another exciting episode of House and Home. We are your host, I'm Terry. And I'm Godfrey, and we have an amazing show for you lined up this evening. Kicking it off, we have cooking once again with Chef Jack as he joins us to prepare for us some Cajun chicken pasta. That sounds delicious. Then right after that, we go to Brian Bell as Leon walks through their Mother's Day specials with us. Right after that, though, we have our friends from Trends coming on once more, and they're going to tell us about where Trends came from, where Trends is now, and where they plan to go next. And for Topman's, they'll be visiting um, the Bavaroko Primary School for some classroom painting. And for those of you students who go to the school, um, I know you'll be familiar with that because they've been there some few days ago. And yep, we can't wait to watch that. Followed by home decors, I will be showing you all how to prepare a indoor curtain, like a few of them, like, yep. And then we wrap up the show with BSB for mobile banking. So for those of you who are planning to apply for that, this information will help you. So without further ado, let's go straight on to our first segment, which is cooking with Jack. This is him as he prepares for us some Cajun chicken pasta. Hello everyone, welcome to Cooking with Jack. Tonight, I want to show you how to prepare and cook Cajun chicken pasta. But before we start, let me introduce you to the Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning consists of a blend of salt with other spices like Cajun pepper, garlic, parsley, and onion, and other spices that come along with it. So let's start by introducing our ingredients. We have here 450 grams of penne pasta, two cups of whipping cream, two chicken breasts, make sure they are boneless and skinless, two tablespoons of Cajun seasoning, four cloves of garlic, a quarter cup of parsley finely chopped, three tablespoons of oil, a cup of Parmesan grated cheese, two and a half cups of chicken stock, and we have our capsicums yellow and red. I wanna start by cutting up our chicken breast. Make sure they have a nice sharp knife. So what I'm gonna do with the chicken breast, I'm gonna cut them, I'm gonna dice them up so they can cook evenly. I'm gonna start off cutting them in the middle and then go half. Cut them into little pieces. Don't cut them too small because if, if you cut them small, they shrink and go really small. Cut them to probably a size like this should be enough. So it's easier to cut up, you put them in this way. So two pieces of chicken breast weigh up to probably around 250 grams. That's like a portion enough to serve for, let's say, three people. So we are done cutting our chicken. So now we're gonna cut up our capsicum. Make sure you change the board. Use a different board to cut vegetables. So let's start from the top. Down to the tail. Cut around the edges. Make sure not to cut up all the, the white stuff. The white stuff from the capsicum makes the capsicum bitter on both sides. So now I'm gonna cut them up into little squares. Make sure to uh, trim off the, the white part inside. That's the bitter part of the capsicum. It ruins the flavor of the capsicum. Just trim them down a bit, take all the white stuff. Now I'm gonna cut them into little squares like this. Don't cut them too small. Make sure skin side down. Cut, up, cut from the inside so it's easier to go through the capsicum. When you're using a blunt knife, you'll end up struggling to cut the capsicum. Well, if you have noticed, I only have uh, the red and yellow capsicum, but you can also throw in the, 
the green one to add more color to your pasta dish. So that's about it. We're done cutting up our capsicum. Now we're gonna put our pot on the stove. It's already on the stove and let's heat it up now. So we're gonna add, uh, let's put it on first. We're gonna add our three tablespoons of oil. And believe it or not, this uh, Cajun style of cooking, it originated from Louisiana, that's in America. It's come a long way, now it's all in PNG, cooking it on the other side of the world. So yeah, Cajun, very nice tasty spice. So let's just tilt the oil around. And we're gonna add our chicken breast first. Make sure to drain all the excess water out so it doesn't destroy our oil. So our oil is ready now, so it's time to throw in our chicken breast. Make sure to put them in bit by bit. Uh, make sure to uh, remove the excess water and put them in bit by bit around the pan so they cook evenly. Make sure you have a wooden spoon and give it a nice stir. You see this brown color here? That's what we want from the chicken. Make sure to toss it around so it cooks evenly. So uh, make sure your chicken is sorted like this. There's a nice brown color on the outside of the chicken. Just keep stirring around and make sure it cooks evenly. So the breast is about ready, so now let's throw in our Capsicum, get the handful and just throw it on top. There's a bit of stir around. Now we're gonna throw in our Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning, mix it around. Give it a nice mix so all the Cajun gets into the, the chicken breast. So the, the Cajun, it has a very strong uh, aroma uh, because of all the other spices and herbs. So as soon as you put it in, you can just smell it, it just goes straight into your nose. It's a very nice smell. And I want to throw in my garlic about Four cloves of garlic, stir it around. I put my garlic in last because our garlic, it burns quickly when you put it in, into, when you're cooking, so it's better to put it in last. Okay, now we're gonna add our chicken stock, it's about three and a half cups of chicken stock. If, if, if you don't have uh, the liquid chicken stock, you can just use uh, 300, uh, three, and a, three and a half cups of water and chicken stock, uh, the powdered chicken stock. You can uh, just pour the water and then add the, the chicken stock after that. So now we're gonna add our heavy cream. And I'm gonna throw in 450 grams of penne pasta. The best thing about this, this dish is you get to cook everything in one pot. So now I'm gonna put on the lid and let it simmer for 15 minutes. So now we're gonna add our two final ingredients. There's uh, one cup of Parmesan cheese. Give it a nice stir. 
And then we're gonna add a quarter cup of parsley, finely chopped parsley. And just give it a nice stir. You see what the cheese has done now to the sauce, it's made it nice and creamy. And the parsley adds a nice color and a nice tangy flavor to the pasta. So that's about it. Now it's gonna put the heat off. Our Cajun chicken pasta is ready to serve. Nice big spoon. With a nice creamy sauce it's given from the Parmesan cheese. Now just add some garnish to it. Add a bit of cheese on the top. Sprinkle some roughly chopped parsley. And there you have it, Cajun chicken pasta. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two tonight. See you next time on Cooking with Jack. Oh my gosh, that pasta looks incredible. Wow, that was pretty interesting. Chef Jack, he's oh. so, I mean like, the way he prepares that. Mm -hmm. And it was so good too, right? It was so simple. I mean, the way he boiled the, the pasta inside of the chicken broth or the chicken, uh, chicken stock, that, w that looked amazing. And wow, that was- Did you say that you actually, actually tried that? Oh yeah, I did actually. I did actually try the chicken pasta and it was, it was quite amazing. I thought it was really delicious, simple to make. I'm definitely gonna try this out at home. And so I hope everyone else tries it out at home you too. You can find the ingredients at your nearest um, retail stores, yeah. Mm -hmm. All of the e ingredients are incredibly easy to uh, find and it's just so simple to make. I love this recipe. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna take a really short break right now. When we come back though, we go shopping with Brian Bell. So stick around. Hey everybody and welcome back to House and Home. So, do you love your mother? I mean, <laughs> sorry. Of course we do. That's a silly question. <laughs> of course you love your mother. So, why not this coming Mother's Day, you buy something awesome to show her how much you do love her. Yes, you can find all of that at Brian Bell Home Center. Check out the Mother's Day catalog. They have a lot of surprises with great products and great prices. So, let's check them out. Welcome to Shopping with Brian Bell, the show that gives you great insight into some of the products that you can find here at Brian Bell. Now, Mother's Day is just around the corner, and are you prepared for it? Well, in this segment, we're going to show you our Mother's Day catalog and how it can assist you to pick out some great products for your mom. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this Mother's Day catalog and see some of the great products you can get for mom this Mother's Day. Mother's Day, a time to let mom know that you love her and are grateful for having her being in your life. Our Brian Bell Home Center's Mother's Day catalog has some great gift ideas from our white goods, furniture, electronics, small appliances, and kitchen goods. This catalog is your go-to guide to finding mom that perfect gift from Brian Bell because like I mentioned before, there's some great products that mom would love to get for Mother's Day. Now there are many wonderful products that you can find in this Brian Bell Mother's Day catalog. Now, one of the products is from a great brand that's synonymous with quality and you can find it here at Brian Bell, and that's Coleman. Now, Coleman is known for giving us Coleman Eskies, which are a great product that all moms love, but this is another great product from Coleman, the Coleman Rechargeable Fan, which is perfect to get your mom for this Mother's Day. This 300mm Coleman Rechargeable Fan is a great gift idea for your mom because not only is it rechargeable, but it's also portable, so she can take it with her wherever she goes. There are different fan speeds that you can adjust to keep you cool. And another bonus is that when there's a blackout, you can count on this device always keeping you cool. Now the next product that I want to bring to your attention from the catalog, which is a great gift idea for mom, are the home and co towels that we have. Mom does a lot of things around the house for all of us, so a great way to tell her I love her, or tell her you love her, is with a home and co towel. Imagine coming out of a refreshing shower and then drying off with one of these fluffy towels that I know your mom would love. 
Home & Co, another great brand that you can find here at Brian Bell. They have some quality towels that I know your mom would love to get this Mother's Day. There's also a range of different sizes of these towels that you can choose from with a variety of different colors so you can select one that would best suit your mom for a gift this Mother's Day. And while we're talking about Home & Co, another great product from that brand is the pillows that we have available here at Brian Bell. Now these pillows are wonderful to give to mom this Mother's Day or this coming Mother's Day. These pillows come in a pack of two, so not only are you getting one for an affordable price, but you're getting two pillows. Now imagine the amount of rest your mom can get on this new set of pillows, so come on in and check that out. Plus, Home & Co also has other bedding items, like we have all season dunas, and we also have bedding items like your bed covers, your duna covers, your pillowcases. These are also perfect gifts to accompany that pillow to create a little gift pack for your mom so she can rest better and love you a bit more this Mother's Day. There's also a variety of different patterns and designs that you can choose from. They all come in different sizes from single to king size and like I mentioned before they come in a variety of different colors and designs so you can choose one that best suits your mom. Also, our Mother's Day competition is up and running. This is affectionately known as Be Mom's Favorite. So come on in and shop and you just might win a 500 kina gift voucher which is drawn weekly. This is not just limited to Port Moresby home centers, but it's to our eight home centers around the country. So come on in and shop and you just might win something extra. You must note that this is not just limited to Brian Bell home centers in Port Moresby. This is extended to all eight home centers around the country. Kokopo, Lei, Medang, Goroka, Mount Hagen, Gordons, Barocco and Vision City. No matter where you are in the country, shop with Brian Bell and you can win. So how do you enter? Well, it's simple. All you have to do is shop here at Brian Bell, spend 50 kina or more, and then you get one of these entry forms. For every 50 kina you spend, you get an entry form. So if you spend 100 kina, you get two. If you spend 200 kina, you get four. If you spend 250 kina, you get five. You get it, right? The more you spend, the better your chances are of winning. So you get this form, fill in your details in the appropriate sections, and then you drop it into the draw box. If your name is drawn, then you win a gift voucher for your mom this Mother's Day. And as if that's not enough, we have a store grand prize which will be drawn at the end of the competition. This is the 2000 Kina gift voucher from Brian Bell to be spent at any of our home centers. There will be one winner each from all Brian Bell home centers around the country. This is a great way to show your mother you appreciate her this Mother's Day. Shop with Brian Bell now and win. Well folks, that's all the time we have in this segment of Shopping with Brian Bell. Now I know you've seen that there's some great products like our Coleman fans and our Home & Go products with their towels, pillows and beddings that you can pick up to bless your mom this Mother's Day. So come on in, check it out. Don't just take my word for it and pick up one of these catalogs. This is perfect so you can plan out what you want to get for your mom or everyone can pick out something and you can all come in and buy it. Now, also, our Be Mom's Favorite competition is up and running. When you shop here, you spend 50 kina or more and you get one of these entry forms, simply fill it in, drop it into the draw box and you might win something extra. Now, if you don't have the time to come in and pick up one of these catalogs, then you can get it online at brianbellgroup.com. So go to the website, check that out. It's on your screen now. Go to the website, check it out and download the PDF. It's a great way for you to shop without even coming here. You can see everything you want, plan out what you want to get for mom and then come on in and buy it for mom. And always remember, quality products, great services and great value. That's Brian Bell. Until next time, goodbye and God bless. Oh my gosh, those Mother's Day specials look amazing, don't you think, Teresa? I actually, I, I didn't go, go yet to check, but yeah, I'm planning to go there to get something for my mom. Yeah. Nice, that's incredible. So, do you have any ideas of what you want to get for your mom? Oh, my mom, she's like always telling me to buy her sewing machine, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think I'll, yeah, save up. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, so we're going to take another really short break, but stick around, because when we come back, we've got Trends back with us once again. Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is House and Home. If you've just tuned in, we're so excited that you could join us. Now, for this next edition, we have trends coming up for you. We 
have a chat with Joe Lai, yeah? mm -hmm. the founder and the director. What are they going to be talking about? Like, is it going to be how trends came to be and mm -hmm. what they've experienced so far and what they plan on you know, achieving in the future? Well, pretty much this is going to be um, where trends started uh, around 27 years ago and wow. basically how much they've built themselves up to be what they are today. And it's, grown, so much. it's, it's yeah. quite an interesting look in how far they've come and uh, all the amazing things that they've done in terms of revolutionizing the way people uh, look at hair yeah. and beauty and makeup in TNG. So it's quite interesting. So without further ado, let's take let's a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> 27 years. That's how long Trends Beauty International has been revolutionizing hair, beauty, and makeup in Papua New Guinea. From humble beginnings as a small salon in Barocco Garden City, to being the largest multicultural distributor of hair and makeup products in the Pacific, Solomon Islands, and Vanuatu, having branches in Goroka, Leh, and eventually, Mount Hagen and the Islands. Let's take a look at how they started. After starting Trends in 1991, owner Joe Lai expanded Trends operations providing employment and training for the community for hair and beauty, and also empowering women, gaining confidence, improving looks, and learning to do stuff themselves back home in their communities. Trends began developing its own line of specialized multicultural beauty care products, bringing in quality hair products and services while discouraging counterfeits. Aside from the hair and beauty, Joe saw the need for wellness to go along with looking beautiful and presentable. That's when Spapua came along, introducing a holistic atmosphere to relax and rejuvenate for one's well-being and healthy lifestyle. Soon after, Trends Beauty Academy was established to properly train internal hairdressers, stylists, barbers, and spa therapists to uphold and provide exceptional service, yet not limiting to provide training for outsiders and organizations who wanted their staff to understand and apply basic grooming, makeup, and wellness in their daily routines. Trends Beauty International not only specializes in products that bring out the true beauty of people, but aim to make people feel beautiful in the best way possible with professionals who know what customers are after. I'm a hairdresser by profession. I came over to Papua New Guinea 30 years ago. Actually, I'm a Papua New Guinea citizen as well. After a few years uh, working late, I came over 25 years ago to Port Moresby, start my own business named Trends. My vision is how to empower this woman. I would like them to gain confidence and look beautiful themselves. My mission is I would like to train more Papua New Guinea women in this country to gain the knowledge and the skill. They were able to start their own business, serving the community, or maybe find a job uh, in their own hometown, and then they can be independent. And currently, we have nine branches around, around the country. We have a couple of branches outside Port Moresby, like Lay and Goroka. In Port Moresby, we provide all kinds of service, like hair coloring, hair perming, hair relaxing, and all braiding as well. Apart from our hair services, we also have well-being services, like our branch called Spa Pure. We provide massage, facial, and pedicure, manicure, waxing as well. And apart from well-being, also not only for women, and also we have for men as well. We have a barber shop called Boys to Men, and currently also we have a branch called Baba Republic at the Stanley Hotel. The Baba we provide hair, haircut coloring and also the hair tattooing as well. The hair tattoo means we make the hair look style, all design on, on, on that. Hello, my name is 
Lillian. I've been working with Trends for the past 15 years. I work down in Waterfront as a team leader for the customers. We want to give them the best service we can provide for them, especially on relax, perm, um, treatment and haircuts and everything. If you want to know more about your hair care, please come down to Waterfront and see me and also our other branches here in Port Mosby. And that was trans, very interesting. They've come so far and a lot of experiences they've had, but it didn't even stop them from achieving what they've planned to achieve. And like for myself, I go there for hair and makeup, but mm -hmm. you know, what about you? They have a barbershop as well. And yes, yeah, they do. I heard um, that they, the guys there are amazing. Oh yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, I go there most of the time to get uh, my hair straightened out. I, I went there a lot when uh, I was helping out on Boca Fusion. Fusion. Whenever yeah. my face looked like really scruffy, I used to go in there and just like that, I would come out and my face was like glowing. Trends. You could, you could see everything and it was so amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a wonder how they, you know, got such a scruffy amazing. face like mine yeah. to look like something that people can like look at. So yeah. um, um, I'm thankful for that. They're actually pretty amazing. So that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a really short break once again when we come back though. Uh, so Teresa, what do we have next again? We have Top Men's coming up, so stay watching. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Now for this week's edition on Top Men's, they get to visit the Bavaroko Primary School for some classroom painting. Oh, that sounds interesting. They're painting a classroom, eh? I really want to see how that looks like. Wow, yeah. that sounds like a really cool thing that Tom are doing. I hope that they do stuff like this, you know, uh, stuff Around, like, yep. yeah, um, a lot more city. like this in the city. So I guess without further ado, let's take a look at what they've done. Hi everyone, welcome to another Tobman's DIY segment. I'm Bruno Jerry, your paint expert. We are here at Bavaroko Elementary and Primary School. We are here to repaint an old classroom. There's a team already working inside. Why not let's go check and lend a hand? So here I have Nathaniel here with me. He has been here uh, earlier and has been doing some work. So uh, we'll find out from Nathan what he has been doing. Yeah, um, well, basically this morning we came in. Uh, the objective of the project is to actually change the face of the interior of the classroom. Uh, so the first thing we did was remove all the old plywood that's on the wall. Green basically is the color that's been chosen by the, uh, the class okay. as their color. Uh, we, from our own perspective, green is more makes it more environmental. Uh, yeah, so it reminds you of the environment and it makes it cooler. Now it is very important to always sandpaper your surface before you start the actual priming. Sanding helps remove the old paint that is on the wall. It also helps remove the stains and it also basically it helps to smoothen the surface. Uh, most painters, so most people complain about paints being uh, not lasting for long. Uh, I wouldn't blame the paint, but it is actually the process of painting that we should blame. When the surfaces are not sandpapered properly, the paint do not last. So now we are done with our Tobman's 3-in-1 metal and wood primer. We have used that to prime our wall. Uh, why, why are we priming our wall? It is very important to always prime your wall because priming helps the paint that you are going to paint onto the, the, the surface and it, it sticks onto the surface uh, much easier. And it also helps the paint to last, or to, to last for a longer period of time. The condition under which we are painting also determines how long our primer will take to dry. Okay, so when we are using a water-based paint or a, a acrylic, it takes a shorter period of time to 
to dry off, but if you are painting under very hot conditions, it dries off very quickly. Uh, if you are using an oil-based paint, oil-based primer, it takes much longer to dry off, but it also depends, depends on the weather condition. If, it, if the weather is hot, it will dry off quickly, but if it is uh, dull weather, it will take a bit longer. So depending on your weather condition, you may decide to leave it for two to three hours, or you may decide to leave it for uh, more than that to dry off so that your, your primer is actually ready before you do your painting. What kind of message are we trying to deliver to the, to the young students here? Painting the classroom being green, okay? So as I've said, green relates to nature. So basically the message behind painting a green wall inside a classroom that belongs to small children is, is to give them the feeling of peace or calm. That we want the students to feel at home or relate themselves to the environment. Because uh, if you look out of the window, you can see that the place is also green. It has a lot of natural environment surrounding the place. So as much as possible, we want to relate the color that is inside the classroom, which is the learning environment to the nature. So there you have it. We are done painting our elementary classroom here at Bavaroko Elementary and Primary School. I'm your host, Bruno Jerry, your Tobin's Paint Expert. Join us again on our next Tobin's DIY segment where we will bring you something different. Bye bye for now. Bye. Oh wow, that is a lovely shade of green, isn't it? Teresa? Awesome, amazing such a, painting. Such a big thank you to Taubman's for doing this for the kids yes. and for the classroom. And a really big thank you for them to uh, breathe new life into the children's yeah. learning environment. That is something that, that's really cool. And the I students think. like who are in that classroom, I'm sure they're really happy and yeah. Mm -hmm, definitely sure. Looking of forward for more painting? <laughs> definitely. All right, so we're gonna take another short break right now, but stick around because when we come back, uh, Teresa, remind me again, what do we have I next? get to show you all how to make indoor curtains. Stay nice. tuned. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to House and Home. So, have any of you ever wanted to make your own curtains? Well, if those of you responded with yes, here was Teresa showing us how to make our own curtains. Teresa, give us a little sneak peek on what you did. Actually, it was sort of like um, a dream project DIY for me. Mm -hmm. So, when I actually made that for the first time, I was like, yeah, I think I should do more of that. So, yep, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Home Decors with House and Home. So glad you could join me. Now for this edition, I will be showing you how to make indoor frilled curtains. So I have my fabric. It's a floral fabric. I have a tape measure, some pins, a pair of scissors, and the master prop, the sewing machine. So let's get started. You can see that the fabric is folded in half. What I will do is take measurements just to make sure that the measurements are accurate. So it's gonna be, because I've already folded this in, it's gonna be 25 and a half. This way, 25 and a half by 15. Now I'm ready to sew. I'm just gonna fold a quarter inch and another half inch in where the edges and sew all the way down. So I'm going to start with a back stitch as usual.
Being creative in the comfort of your home is super fun as there is no boundary to what you should or should not do as it is your home and your home is your domain. That's how I feel when I'm home. I have the freedom to decide how my home should look like. Indoor curtains have always been my dream project for DIYs. I give all the credits to my mom for being an amazing example since my childhood that I am able to sew on my own these days. Now you will notice that I did not hem the other edge. This is because I need to make a much more larger fold to sew the area where the rod can be pushed through. Area for the iron rod. What I am doing is folding in an inch and then another fold again which is 4 inches. Now I'm using pins to keep it folded. You don't have to use a lot of pins, just 3 one in the middle and two on both sides to keep it folded. Now place under the press of foot and start sewing. I always prefer to use straight stitch only when I'm using a floral fabric. I use different stitches only when I'm using a plain fabric just to show off the decorative stitches. Now run another straight stitch at the top after hemming the folded edge. There you go. This is the part where the iron rod is pushed through. Step 4. Frills. Now I have the frills to work on and it's 50 by 5 and a half inches. Place again under the press of foot and do gathering or tiny pleats and start sewing. Other sewing machines have special features like having separate parts that you can join to make frills, pleats or embroidery stitches and you name it. Now take a look at how the frills look like after sewing it together with the other piece. There you have it, a simple indoor curtain frill. Now when you're sewing curtains for your home, make sure you choose a fabric that's suitable for the interior color of your home. The one that is delightful, a kind of fabric that will somewhat be a reason why your friends would want to hang out for jolly good times, movie sessions and whatnot because they are captivated at the side of the curtains. But it's all up to you to make that happen. Drop by at your nearest fabric shops and purchase your favorite floral or maybe your plain fabric and so following the steps that I've just shown you. And this is our frilled curtain. It looks beautiful. I just love the floral fabric that I've used. I'll just fold it and let you have a look at the frills. Yeah, there you go. Pretty. Now, if you want to have a, a written method of how to go about doing this project, please visit our Facebook page and I'll be more than happy to assist you. So until the next time, stay tuned for more Home Decors with House and Home. Wow, Teresa, those, those curtains look awesome. Oh, thank you. Was it very difficult to, to find all the things and to put them all together, yeah? No, I mean, like what I said, it was just, it's a simple DIY. If you get the hang of it, like I always say, if you get the hang of it, you could do that in less than five or probably less than 10 minutes, yep. Wow, okay, that's quite easy, wow. <laughs> but let me tell you, the, the biggest problem that I have when I'm looking for new curtains and when I'm putting new curtains onto like my windows is that I can never find the one that matches the height it's always so difficult. So whenever I buy a new curtain that it always seems to go lower or too high, I always end up adding like bits of fabric at the bottom or like folding it up and holding it together with like uh, pins, which I don't think is the best idea because then they don't look that great. I know. So, but yeah. sometimes it doesn't have to match, match the height. Sometimes mm -hmm. it looks sort of like fancy when it's shorter than the actual like window. Right. Then you get to, you know, do another one same as the, the one above. Like you can then add something below like the okay. same can be below that. Right, that's interesting. Okay, I'm learning things. This is, this is pretty cool. Same. Anyway, we're going to take another short break right now. When we come back, though, Teresa, oh, what are we, we have next? We have BSP. Right. Yep. 
We have, we have BSP coming up right after the break, uh, where they show us uh, what's new with their mobile banking. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We're so excited to have your company. Now, for all your banking solutions, we also have BSP. Now, tonight, we are going to be looking at um, the mobile banking. Gofriman, tell us a bit about your experience for mobile banking. I know you always do that because I catch you, you know, punching <laughs> your mobile keypads and all that. That's true, yes. Uh, I do use mobile banking a lot, and I think it's actually a very incredibly useful feature that BSP has. Basically, it allows me to access my funds whenever I need to. If I don't have an ATM nearby, whenever I need credits, I can just press a few buttons, and there I have credits. I can send credits to people. I can I, I can send uh, money whenever I need to to my relatives or people who need it. And I just think it's super All handy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At the office, I can uh, I, I can check how much my balance is at any given moment just on my phone. So I think something like that in the palm of your hand is a very underestimated uh, power to have. Yes. So I think I'm, I'm a very big fan of this feature that BSP is doing. So uh, thank you so much, BSP. Let's see what you have uh, t new to offer for this application. <laughs> Good evening, viewers, and welcome to another BSP segment. Banking should not be time-consuming and costly for you if you take advantage of BSP's extensive branch network, access points, and electronic banking solutions available. As a customer, you can have access and control over your account information and transaction. Manage your banking and do your banking at your convenience, anywhere and anytime. You can bank smart by using one of BSP's e-banking solutions, mobile banking. Being able to access your bank account anytime, anywhere makes mobile banking more appealing. It offers services like SMS alerts, which notifies you when your pay is ready, check your balance, and monitors your transaction history. BSP Mobile Banking is available 24 hours, 7 days a week, and is easy and convenient mode for many mobile users in the rural areas. For BSP Mobile Banking, the first thing to do is to get your SIM registered and activate your mobile banking. You can easily do that at your closest BSP branch or right away when you open your new account. It is also advisable to get a smartphone that is compatible to access mobile banking. BSP Mobile Banking allows the customer to do the following. View their mini statement, view current and available balances, purchase digital phone top up direct from the account, transfer funds to own account, other BSP accounts or to other bank accounts within PNG, one talk money transfer funds to anyone with a Digicel mobile number, receive SMS alerts whenever there is an activity on an account, and manage pays, mobile numbers, meter number, and alerts via menu-based services. This service is for customers with active BSP personal accounts who own mobile phones. This improved mobile banking services is session-based and lasts for two minutes. It starts upon dialing the short code star 131 hash. For queries regarding BSP Mobile Banking, please read through electronic banking terms and conditions located on the website at www.bsp.com.pg or contact the Customer Service Centre on 320-1212 or 7030-1212 or email servicebsp at bsp.com.pg. Well viewers, we have come to the end of our segment for tonight. Do join me next month for more BSP updates. Until then, goodbye. And that was Tina Pomat with more information on mobile banking. Now I know why Godfrey really loves mobile banking. Definitely, Teresa. I love BSP and I love this feature that they have. But unfortunately, that brings us to the end of another episode of House and Home. Like we always say, do check out our Facebook page. We've got lots and lots of information coming up for you in the next episode. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so from everybody here at the MTV team and House and Home team, wish you all pleasant viewing. Good night. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Good night, okay, everybody. Bye.